We're moving right along now. Here we examine the rich facilities of the paint application. The big picture about paint is that you can use it to draw new pictures, open existing pictures, and edit pictures. You can crop, you can resize, you can rotate. You can draw lines on an image, and you can save the results in a variety of formats. You can also print pictures whether or not you edit them. Let's explore the paint interface. When you launch paint from the taskbar, it starts out like this. So at the top is the classic title line, then the menu choices showing the ribbon of choices under the current menu selection. We focus here on the home menu choices. For the main attraction, we have a canvas to draw on. You can paste whatever is in the clipboard into the canvas, or you can draw. You can draw using a pencil tool. You go over and specify for the tool what color you want. And then, uh, oh wait, uh, you can also specify how thick of a line you want. So let's do a variety of demonstrations using different thicknesses. So it's totally free form. You can also draw using the paintbrush, which actually gives you a large selection of styles to choose from. So we'll demonstrate each of them. Again, we'll use the different styles, but you can choose a different color as we showed earlier for the paintbrush as you can for the pencil. Kind of like this spray can effect. You see how different they are. And you have to get to know which styles for which pictures you're going to draw. You can get an idea here. And just to show, you can change the thickness of the paintbrush as with the pencil. So. You can draw using various shapes. Let's do a simple sketch here. Highlight the circle to select it. Move into the canvas and then I can draw and shape it as I want. And I can even move it. Let's see that there. Now once you're off of it though, you can't move it unless you do a select. I'll do a rectangular selection and then draw a box around the figure I've already drawn. And then I can right click, copy, move off the figure and right click again and paste. The pasted figure always appears in the upper left hand corner of the canvas. I'm going to move this over here and notice that as I pass the copy obscures the original image and we'll see why that is in just a minute. So I've got these two guys lined up and now I'm going to select the straight line shape and draw a line from here to here and from here to here. I'm working on the shape for a disk. Now I'm going to go to the eraser and uh, make it thick and erase this line here which is supposed to be behind. Well, I didn't do it perfectly. There are tools you can use to do detailed touch-up the eyedropper specifically to touch up individual pixels. And we're not going to do that here. Now I'm going to go and select the rectangle and I'll draw a square, say like that. And then I'm going to select this, but I'll do a rectangular selection and a transparent selection. Now when I select this, right click, copy, right click, paste, and it comes in the upper left hand corner. Notice how it's transparent. You can see the copy through the original. Now, going back to the line tool, I'm going to connect the corners. Like that. Like that. Like that. And then back to the eraser to erase these lines that I don't want showing.
It's detailed, careful work. And, like I say, you can touch it up a little later. Now, I want to label these, so I'm going to go to the text icon. And let's make it red. Now I put the cursor on the screen and click it, and it displays a text box. And I notice I also have a new menu choice, text tools. I've chosen my font and size for now. So this is a picture of a disk. And I can resize the text box. And I want to move it a little bit. So let's get that there. Shows that I can move it. And then over here, I want to label this as my CPU. And then again, we'll resize and move it just a little bit. Then I can go back to the Home menu and choose the arrow. I want to show we have flow of control from the CPU to the disk. Command a read or a write. And then use the other arrow to indicate we have flow of control from the disk to the CPU. Indicate the operation is done. And there's a sample little sketch. Now, the work I do with drawing on paint is hardly art, but I wanted to show you it is possible to create some more interesting art using paint. What you want to do is go to YouTube and do a search on using paint in Windows 10, for example, and you'll get a wide variety of videos to choose from. I was especially taken with this artist. Here's a sample picture from the YouTube video from her, which I thought was pretty impressive. And this also gives me an opportunity to talk about how to resize pictures. So let's look at that next. When you have a picture that doesn't fill the canvas, as shown here with all the white area, you can resize it. First you go to Select, choose Rectangular Selection, and highlight the picture. Select the picture. But now you have, if you move the cursor, uh, there we go. You see you can just stretch the picture to fill the canvas. Now you can do a Save As and save it as a JPEG and save it under a different name. Um, dash Resized, for example. Alternatively, you could use the Resize dialog. While you have the selected area, you can specify a percentage. And so you could resize it 120% or 130% or 75%. Make the picture fit what you're after. Here's another application that I use Paint for. What you see is an image from Google Earth. Google Earth is a free product that lets you view images of almost any location on the planet. Right now, I've focused on Tsukiji Fish Market in Tokyo. And I want to draw an image, a map, a route, so my guide knows how to get from Tsukiji to our next stop, which will be the Hamarikyu Gardens. So the first thing I do is hit Print Screen, which puts the screenshot into the clipboard. Then I'm going to close Google Earth and bring up Paint. And I'm going to do Control V, which pastes the clipboard content into Paint. So now I have that image. Now what I want to do is just get the picture part. I don't want all this extraneous stuff on the left. It's a little tricky, though, because I have to scroll up and down, left and right, to get what I want. So I'm going to use the slider at the bottom so I can just focus on the picture. So I do rectangular selection, and I select just the picture. Then Control x puts that into the clipboard, and I click Control n to start a new paint screen. And it says, do you want to save what you have? I say, no, I don't and it's sufficient to type the letter N for no. And now, Control v puts what's in the clipboard into the canvas. Now, what I want to do is draw the route. So I'm going to go to the pencil and make it as thick as I can, and I'm going to make it red. Now what I'm going to do is go from here, which is in front of Tsukiji Market, down along this street, 
and we go around the corner and then we cross the bridge which takes us right to the entrance of the gardens. So now I've got my map and I'll save it as a JPEG and I'll call it uh, directions and I'm good to go. Now I can verify that by going to my directory and double clicking and there indeed is the picture that I wanted to have. Finally, another application we came across was the need to digitize photos. We had a whole bunch of photos from a community theater group we used to run and they were getting old and not very good quality. So we decided to scan them in and digitize them. We'll walk through the major steps and then we'll run a sample so you can see how it all fits together. First, you have to scan to the computer and we're not going to demonstrate that because that's different for everybody's system. So we assume you can scan to the computer as a JPEG. Next, you need to locate the file, where it was scanned to, and open it with the paint application. Then use paint to resize the image, perhaps add in a caption, and then save as, and save in a directory with a name that you've already planned. So here's the results of doing scans on my computer. Notice where the files got put. In the directory called users, subdirectory owner, which is the user ID I run under, and the sub subdirectory documents. And the names were assigned by the scanning hardware and software. The one I most recently scanned was the one named scan19.jpg. Now let's right click and open with paint. So we see our picture, and I'm going to select Rectangular Selection and select the picture. And we'll select it and get the cursor so I can stretch the picture. There we go. And then this space is room for a caption. So I go to Text, and this happened to be from the show The Odd Couple. And uh, make sure I have some more room here. Stretch that out. And this was run in February 1981, a long time ago. And uh, in the picture is me and Nancy Pale and Kitty Comstock. And then I'm ready to save as a JPEG. And I'll call it Odd Couple. And that's the process. So there you have a quick introduction to the paint application. We've seen how to draw simple sketches, how to change color and width of lines, shapes, the pencil, and the paintbrush, how to resize pictures, and how to add text or drawing to pictures. We also saw an example of using paint to create works of art. Next up, how to multitask in Windows. See you there.